Hello guys, welcome back once again to today's panel discussion and I hope you must have enjoyed yesterday's discussion with Dr. Pawar, Dr. Nalgurikar and Dr. Jambulkar. So today we are here, the heroes of second professional year, myself Dr. Ranjit, I am a pathologist. We have Dr. Ankit with me who is going to take pharmacology for us, he is an MD, DM in clinical pharmacology and we have Dr. Mamta Java with us who is an MD in microbiology and she will be taking microbiology for us. Together as a team, I am pretty much sure that we will help you not just to ace the exams, to understand the subjects, so we will have a perfect foundation to build upon to your clinical subjects and to learn, enjoy pathology, pharmacology and microbiology. Over to you, Dr. Ankit. Hello everyone, myself, Dr. Ankit Kumar. So I have been teaching NEET aspirant, USMLE, dental aspirant for past 10 years. And we will sail through this beautiful journey, we will interact with you. So this is all from my side for a moment. Dr. Mamta, over to you. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mamta Java, MBBS MD Microbiology. Microorganisms have always fascinated me and that was the very reason I picked up MD Microbiology as my speciality. So guys, I have been into the teaching sector since past 7 to 8 years now, teaching the NEPG aspirants, FMG exam aspirants and the USMD aspirants. So broadly in uh, clinical microbiology, we study about the enemies who trouble us, that is who make humans sick and we also learn about the strength which God has given us to fight these enemies, that is the immune system. Uh, in other words, we learn about uh, clinical immunology and uh, it's really fantastic uh, to see how beautifully different members of our immune system come together to fight on our behalf against these pathogenic micro pathogenic microorganisms and that is going to be my focus in my videos telling you about your enemies and also telling you about your strength to deal with them that's great to hear mamta uh, so here we are three of us with uh, shared passion for teaching and to share knowledge with you guys who are the future pillar of healthcare of a country and we do have lots of questions from medical graduates and doctors all around the country and we'll try to address that in the panel discussion. So the first question is to Dr. Ankit. So how do you remember the name of the drugs? The question is from Dr. Patel Ranesh Kumar from UCMS Delhi. So it's a very pertinent question and I think it is the most commonly asked question by students to me. Sometimes I hear this question in my dreams also. Yes, it's difficult. It is difficult if we are simply mugging the name of the drugs. Remember, there is a trick. There is a trick, believe me. I'll give you a very simple example. There are three drugs. One drug is Fasudil. Fasudil. Sudil word is coming. Next is Netarsudil. Again, Sudil word is coming. So any drug which ends with the word Sudil, I will be telling you in upcoming lectures, it will be a Rho kinase inhibitor. Similarly, Mipomersane, Arsane, Fomiversane, all these will be antisense oligonucleotides. Remember, now the nomenclature of the drugs from past 20 years has been systemized, basically, that there are tricks how to remember the name of the drug. And it is even more easier to correlate the name of the drug with the pathology part also. So don't worry, sit back, relax. There are tricks, there are ways to remember the names of the drug. And we are here to guide you how to sail through this. So thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ankit. That's a great insight to know and how to remember the drugs. I hope Patel would have been much more clearer on what to do regarding when it comes to drug names. And I'm sure with uh, the entire lecture series of uh, Dr. Ankit, uh, most of the drug names is going to become very, very like a household name for you guys. right? So I have one more question to Dr. Mamta Java. Uh, it's from Dr. Raman from Ames, Delhi. How to write a theory paper as answer writing is an art? So, over to you, Mamta. Uh, thank you. Uh, guys, um, answer writing, as uh, Dr. Ranjit rightly said, uh, it's an art. First and foremost, don't be under the impression that uh, if you know everything, you are also going to translate all of that into a theory paper because all of the knowledge you have need not actually be translated into uh, the written format. So we read a lot in our books, but the most important thing uh, to score well in exams is how you write your answer, which has got a lot of important uh, insights to be looked into. For instance, you should have a fantastic handwriting. I know uh, because, you know, sometimes the paper is lengthy, you really can't focus on the handwriting part uh, that much. 
what i'm trying to say is the handwriting should be legible now if your university uh, as if your university rules allow you to use colors i would say you should use color pencils to draw diagrams and draw as many diagrams as possible even if you know uh, some some uh, schematic diagram you can uh, draw to represent something i think that will fetch you more marks uh, rather than writing about it write your answer in headings don't write long stories focus on writing just the bullet points draw a lot of diagrams for instance uh, a very commonly asked question in second mbbs prof exams is uh, write a short note on cox postulates so it will be beautiful if you write about those four postulates you know uh, in the form of a schematic representation so bullet point bullet point uh, answers instead of long stories uh, drawing uh, diagrams good good handwriting because always remember your examiner is not going to be checking just your paper the examiner has got hundreds of papers to correct and sometimes even the examiners might not be in a you know good or great mood so Uh, they should not be irritated and frankly speaking nobody is going to read lengthy lengthy answers i'll be pretty impressed if i am checking uh, you know a, a well written paper where i am uh, you know i'm i'm looking at more of schematic uh, representations rather than you know long long sentences so i think it's an art sometimes uh, what i've personally uh, observed is some students they don't read that much but they are very good at uh, you know scoring well in exams and uh, that is what smart work is all about of course you should uh, read very well you should not uh, you know neglect your books but then again uh, when you are looking at your university question papers which by the way is a very important exercise to do if you aim at scoring uh, you know good marks because you should know uh, what is uh, what has been the ongoing pattern in your college since past few years so looking back uh, uh, looking at the previous year question papers is very very important so you will be able to filter out uh, the important topics which are being asked in your college so pertaining to those topics you uh, you know you can practice writing answers you can just take a rough notebook and just start scribbling um you know the the headings the schematic rep representations you can you know make up a mind map uh, so to say um regarding all the important points which are supposed to be written in that answer so that you get maximum marks uh, thank you dr mantha for the elaborate answer and uh, i wish there was someone like this uh, when i was in second year of mbbs to guide me of how to write an exam paper so i might have not looked for the pass when the result come and i would have aim for distinctions honors Dr. Raman, I hope the answer was helpful for you, and I wish that you get either a distinction or an honor in all throughout the MBBS career. And the third question here is directed towards me: Pathology. How to prepare pathology in second year of MBBS? It's from Dr. Khan Mehta from GMERS, Vadodara. Uh, Dr. Khan, first of all, that uh, I always believe that your mind is the best animation studio what you have got, and whenever you, you imagine something, you are never ever going to forget it. Let's take a patient came, comes with cirrhosis. i'm sure you must have known that the etiology is one of the important things in pathogenesis is an alcoholic so picture a person with a bottle of beer or alcohol so that gives me the etiology the person drinks for a long time develops ascites like a belly so that destroys the liver because liver produces albumin so when this go when it's not going to be there all the uh, fluid from the in the blood system is going to come outside so if you imagine this imagination is the most powerful thing which every one of us have and i believe me it's better than walt disney your imagination your cartoons which you make in brain your head has no match for, for any one of us here so make your own thing imagine a patient rather than a textbook so once you imagine you put into physiology you put into pathology you convert into clinical medicine you are going to be an amazing physician forever fine so i hope that uh, answers your question so going on to the next question we have one more question to dr ankit uh, so it's a very uh, important question which i also had for a long time when i was an mbba student and i hope we will have much more clarity on that uh, dr ankit the question is how to register the names of so many pharmacological drugs and their actions especially in a long term memory i am sure everyone will remember for a couple of days how are you going to remember for years together and the question is from dr pragya mitra from ucms delhi over to you dr ankit uh, it's a good question and i think it's an overlapping question again so how to uh, 
I would personally believe what I have personally felt since my MBBS days is that I would rather say to you that don't remember the name of individual drug first. It's always better to first remember the name of group. Let's take an example. We want to learn about beta blockers, and we know that all beta blocker ends with the word L O L lol. Not that Facebook wala lol. It's L O L lol. Now, if I'll say propenolol, etinolol, metoprolol, so we know it's a big group, and all of these are beta blockers. Now, the second question. So now we have an idea. Yes, it's a beta blocker. Now, the second thing which comes in our mind is where it is used. Your second question was that where it is used. Now we already know that when we will discuss pharma, that beta receptors are present on heart, beta one, and JG cells of kidney. and beta 1 receptor on heart increases heart rate we all know hai na it's a very simple and uh, matlab very commonly used uh, concept and on uh, kidney it increases blood pressure through renin release now beta blocker now think about it beta blocker like sara said imagine not in pink and blue this time imagine in the name of drugs okay so it will suppress heart it will suppress renin release so don't you think it will suppress heart heart has to function less so when the heart is beating more arrhythmia tachycardia mi hocm hypertrophy when the heart is beating more agreed hypertension so all these conditions where will you will be using beta blocker as a first line drug so now you have understood that beta blocker are first line drug so now if i'll ask you uh that what would be the adverse effect or side effect of beta blocker it is suppressing heart what will be your answer think about it don't you think it will cause bradycardia don't you think it will cause hypotension so it's very simple trust me if you know the basic concept behind it if you have found that nerve which you want to tingle you will have all the sensation everything you will learn everything about drugs yes it will take efforts initially i won't say that there are any shortcuts there is no magical remedy of it okay there is no super lotion we can say that we drink and it will take time it will take efforts but remember if we start from conceptual basis if we start conceptually believe me you will never forget it now why you don't forget your name because you repetitively pronounce your name that is why we don't forget our name so it takes at least 6 to 7 times to pronounce the name of a drug so that we can easily remember the name of the drug in long term and yes when we will say la journey again i am saying we will go in a very methodol uh, methodological way in a very systematic way we will go and at the end of our lecture yes trust me you will be very much confident that you will remember the name of drugs where they are used what are their adverse effect and when the patient comes in front of you your hands will not tremble you will be confident enough to choose the best therapy or best pharmacotherapy for your patient uh thanks a lot dr ankit i if i may say i think your understanding and uh, sharing of knowledge to your students might itself act like a beta blocker to calm them down during the exams uh, i hope so and uh, i have one more question to dr mamta uh it's from uh, dr manish from sms jaipur what should be the focus on the learning of the subject the scores or to become a good doctor it's going little bit maybe philosophical if i can say so i will leave it to dr mamta to answer the question thank you dr ranjit uh i think this is a question which needs to be uh, addressed uh, very very importantly see guys uh you enter into the medical school to become a good doctor and uh, the first uh, and foremost uh, uh, individual you should think about is is the is your patient all right so irrespective of whatever subject you are reading as dr ranjit said a few minutes back that you should uh, imagine a patient in front of you you should make up stories in your head regarding you know whatever you are reading that will go a long way in uh, helping you build long term memory okay so the focus should be uh should be on the subject just for the love of it because not everyone uh, gets the opportunity to prefix doctor to their names so trust you me if you have 
enter the medical school that itself you know um, you know tells us uh, that you are a high achiever you are a high achiever so the focus should be uh, on learning the subject with utmost passion honesty and sincerity rather than you know just running after marks this might sound a little bit contradictory to the previous question which i answered where i was uh, telling you about uh, you know how to score well of course see everybody likes praise and everybody likes to you know achieve uh, bigger things in life and uh, during student life of course one um, one of the important uh, you know things which uh, makes us feel good about ourselves is when we score well when uh, our teachers and our parents appreciate us uh, nothing wrong in that and that's a very natural feeling but let me also tell you that the focus should be on learning the subject irrespective of whatever marks you are scoring i have seen personally students whose knowledge is fantastic but unfortunately they are unable to score that well that does not mean at all that they are not hard working or they are not putting in efforts so basically what i'm trying to say is your marks or your scores are not going to be reflective of how successful you are going to be in future so just learn the subject for the love of it for your patients to become a better, better doctor to absorb as much knowledge as you can so as to treat your patient in the best possible manner in future and let me i think uh, i would want to say three idiots famous dialogue over here ki एक्सीलेंस के पीछे भागो सक्सेस अपने आप आएगी सो इफ यू आर स्टडिंग सिंसियरली यू आर बाउंड टू यू नो इफ यू आर स्टडिंग सिंसियरली एंड यू आर कीपिंग इन माइंड ऑल द टिप्स आई टोल्ड यू अबाउट स्मार्ट वर्क वेन आई आंसर द प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन ओके सो दैट इट सेल्फ विल हेल्प यू स्कोर वेल नाउ द डिस्क्लेमर इन दिस आंसर इज इवन इफ फॉर सम रीजन यू आर अनेबल टू स्कोर वेल और इवन इफ यू फ्लंक डू नॉट look down upon yourself because failures are building blocks uh, of success one supplementary exam or one you know one lesser score in some subject is not uh, going to be reflective of as i said previously also how good you are so never ever judge yourself based on the marks you score otherwise you'll just miss the fun of learning thank you dr mamta uh, dr ankit do you have any inputs yeah, i want to add one thing i think uh, what mamta ma'am has said is absolutely true i think we should always have a habit of hame apne aap ko maaf kar dena chahiye hame har baat pe apne aap ko saza nahi deni chahiye if we learn how to do this thing we will be very happy and will be very successful in life fantastic sir i think apne aap ko maaf karna sikhenge to dusron ko bhi maaf kar payenge to it's it don't be too harsh on yourself it's just an exam just just just, just a score jo 5 saal ke baad aapko shayad yaad bhi nahi rahega to acche se padho sincerity se puri shiddat ke sath padho and uh, baki just do your best and as they say leave the rest to the almighty uh, thanks a lot for your input and uh, we we are one of the privilege set to know uh, to know entire thing about a human body so just enjoy it and marks success exams everything will be a byproduct for sure right so we'll have one more question uh, the last question is from uh, dr anurag agarwal who is from ningxia medical university china uh, his question and i think this is one of the most sorted uh, most wanted question for the entire second year students how do we remember a pathology slide not just for the mbbs students for even if you are not a pathologist and sometimes even for a pathologist there's always query how do i remember the slide if i can uh, take an anecdotal uh, uh, reference that most of you guys including me and including dr mamta and dr ankit i would if i can say they must have identified a slide from looking from outside it not looking into the microscope that's what we are all comfortable with right so uh, i hope doc everyone here will agree for that so How, what to do that in an exam in a neat pg exam or in a next exam unfortunately we don't have the slide and unfortunately we don't have the markings so how to identify that that's a very important question and we'll start again with the basics in pathology i have only two colors pink and blue when i have 20 different colors there's a chance of confusion when there are two colors there shouldn't be any confusion so if at all in any exams you're going to write if you have an image in a pathology related question do not look at the image you cannot become a pathologist in 4 years it needs time it needs expertise so you must be wondering what should i look at look at the history look at the patient look at the diagnosis because that's what you've been trained in the 4 years 
you have to come to an presumptive diagnosis by looking at the history at the stem of the question try to solve the question without the image try this once next time in your gt you'll definitely able to solve the question even without the help of the pathology image unless if it's a spotter if it's a spotter those will be easy ones i'm sure you can tackle it right so next time on what's maybe try it for every subject hide the image in an image based question try to solve the question if you can solve without that maybe implement that in your upcoming exams as well right so since we are in the topic of exams uh, i am sure that you have you're hardly preparing for your upcoming neat pg which is going to happen in Ma march 5th of 2023 and uh, just a quick tip of how to prepare for the subjects from each one of us we'll start with dr ankit so your opinion if we take this march neat uh, uh, 2023 not much days are left i believe so hardly less hardly 30 40 days i would uh, calculate now the point is there are 19 subjects and days are i think even not in the multiples of 2 also that we can give two days to a particular subject so first thing i would like to say is right now don't learn any new concept whatever you have learned till now use this and revise it now how to revise it you don't have to go through the theory part again open your mcq book i think you must have solved at least once i know you all are very hard working people you must have done much more than that also some student open your mcq book you if you see that book you had a memory that i had uh, i went to through the uh, main is question mein pehle kahin na kahin pad chuka hu i have already went through this question if you will go through that question you will have immediate recall that yes maine ye padha tha then when you will repetitively revise that question second time or third time it will become solidifies in it solidifies inside you the more you will repeat it the more the chances you will remember the concept you will remember the information behind it now the point is right now is the point of right now is the time of cramming this information right now you should not touch any new concept right now okay because whatever you have learned let's say 70% 80% 60% it's fine it's fine some questions in your neat let's say 20 what we are seeing from past 5 years 10 to 20% of the questions in neat are out of this world very rarely a student will able to solve them next 10 to 20% are very easy for that you should uh, even if you are not an mbbs also you have just passed your time let's say 5 years in your college you would have solved it the remaining 60% of the question is what you have worked for so try to remember try to recall or try to practice that 60% of the question which you have worked on which you have given time before yes you will easily come out to be around 70 80% percentile and you will get a very good rank i uh, thank you dr ankit your opinion dr mamta what they should do exactly in the last 30 days or 40 days of uh, their upcoming neat pg exam i think i would like to sum it up um, by rrr that is revision of relevant material along with relaxation in between so as ankit sir rightly said it's uh, guys it's all about revision so visualizing repeatedly whatever you have already learned don't go after any new stuff have faith in whatever source you have been using read it again and again and again there's no point in reading 10 different good sources at all that is going to just waste your time and create more fomo rather than that whatever source you have you read it 10 times so revision is very very important uh, se the second r is relevant material now what is relevant material of course whatever platform you have been following for your preparation you stick to that platform's notes and the previous year questions that is the pyqs they are the most important thing to be done because they will orient you towards the important topics at least previous 3 years pyqs you must do so that is the uh, revision of relevant material and the third r is relaxation guys we are not robots we are all humans 
जैसे हम अपने फोन को चार्ज करते हैं वी ऑल ऑल्सो नीड ब्रेक्स सो टेक शॉर्ट ब्रेक्स आफ्टर लेट से टू एंड हाफ टू थ्री आवर्स टेक ब्रीफ नैप्स इन बिटवीन इफ यू वट एवर वर्क फॉर यू इन यू नो इन हेल्पिंग यू इन हेल्पिंग यू यू नो बिकमिंग रिलैक्सड लाइक लिसनिंग टू सम सूदिंग म्यूजिक और मेडिटेशन और जस्ट यू नो हैविंग अ नाइस कप ऑफ कॉफी और वट एवर यू लाइक यू नो वॉचिंग सम ब्रीफ कॉमेडी वीडियो ऑन यूट्यूब आई यू शूड डू दैट वेन आई वॉज अ स्टूडेंट सो बेसिकली यू शूड गिव योर गिव योर सेल्फ फ्रीकुंट ब्रेक्स ऑल्सो इन बिटवीन सो दैट यू डोंट गेट यू नो यू डोंट गेट फ्रस्ट्रेटेड इट्स वेरी इट्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू कीप अप दी मोमेंटम राइट टिल द डे ऑफ द एग्जाम अदरवाइज यू नो ऑल वट एवर यू हैव लर्न इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू रिप्रोड्यूस ऑल दैट नॉलेज इन दोज थ्री आर्स it will become really really frustrating so revision of relevant material and uh, you know being a little easy on yourself by giving yourself frequent breaks so that's very important uh, thank you dr mamta for the uh, insightful opinion about what to do for the next one month so as you guys know that we are coming up with a pw sprint for your upcoming neat pg preparation a very very fast way to revise and recollect and remember whatever you know Let's give you a glimpse of what you can expect from PW Sprint in pathology, pharmacology, and microbiology now, so that you can be prepared and you can use the uh, session for the best of your practice and to ace the NEET PG exam. Over to you, Dr. Ankit, and what students can expect in the pharmacology PW Sprint session. So, as the name symbolizes sprint, now it's time to run. So, in this sprint session, uh, I will be taking pharmacology, and in this. 3 to 4 hours of session let's take it as 4 hours of session we will be discussing whole pharmacology and trust me more than 90% of the questions will come from that sprint part only yes so rest 10% we can take our chances so it will be a high yield topic it will be a super revision for you and it will be very valuable for you i believe in getting a good rank Thank you, Dr. Ankit. Over to you, Dr. Mamta. What students can expect in the microbiology sprint session of yours, please? Thank you, uh, guys. The importance of PYQs uh, cannot be overemphasized. So, in the microbiology uh, sprint session by PW, you can expect me to cover all the important PYQs from last three years, plus a lot of tips and tricks in microbiology, which a lot of students, you know. regarding a lot of topics which students find it uh, find hard to remember like catalase oxidase positive organisms and all and uh, i always tell my students that your foundation has to be very very strong in solving the clinical questions now pre and para clinical subjects are the foundation which is uh, which has to be strong uh, if you want to master the clinical subjects so for example let's say uh, you have a clinical vignette in your exam about some infectious disease and the question mentions about the organism being a gram positive oxidase negative etc etc so if you have these uh, lists of organisms which are oxidase positive oxidase negative etc etc you will have no problem in ruling out the uh, you know at least two or three options out of the four options being provided to you always remember guys the answer in an mcq based exam is always in front of you it's not a written paper you don't have to write anything it's not a viva voce examination the answer is in front of you you just have to be smart enough to pick up the right answer and that smartness comes from remembering certain like for for example in microbiology by remembering some tips and tricks and mnemonics and uh, all of that i am going to cover in the sprint uh, session and as i said uh, pyqs are the most important thing uh, one should never go to the exam only i would say if one has not done pyqs they are that important so expect all the important pyqs from my side in my sprint session uh, thank you dr mamta and for pathology you must be wondering how anyone can cover pathology in 4 5 hours the honest answer is no one can but what we can do is the pyq and the topics around it i am going to keep it like fastest finger first i'll be asking rapid questions and i want you guys to come live on youtube and answer that revision answer revision so it's just going to be a rapid session which will help you to recollect whatever you have already known and definitely rem- to remember at the day of exam 
and how i'm going to compile everything is if you think clearly any disease is going to fall under acute inflammation chronic inflammation cancer that's all immunology so we'll run through the basic concepts of that and then definitely we'll apply in different organ systems to ace any disease the third part of the sprint will be triggers in mcq if you look at any mcq be it a five line mcq or a two line mcq there'll be one particular trigger like let's say granulomas tuberculosis pa is positive organism in intestine whipple's disease so i'll be taking that triggers for almost every disease so that you can ace your diagnosis sitting in the exam that's what we will be seeing in pw sprint and pathology hope to see you guys everywhere uh, there and we'll discuss and learn more together thank you